Okay, welcome to Unit 7, Chapter 11. And the first thing we're going to discuss in this video is harmonic motion. Uh, specifically, we will start with simple harmonic motion. But first, we're going to look at springs. So what happens if you take a, a, a horizontal spring like this and you stretch it to the right? So imagine you take your hand and you pull it to the right. Well, the spring pulls back to the left. And in general, all springs resi resist a stretch or a compression. If your hand pulls or pushes a spring, then the spring will generate an opposing force, F spring. Now, Robert Hooke came up with an equation for calculating this spring force based on how much stretch or compression there was. And here's his equation. In this equation, we'll see in a second, but k is the spring constant, and x is called the displacement, which is simply the amount that the spring has been stretched, or the amount the spring has been compressed. Now, something to notice is that according to this equation, according to this equation, the spring force is directly proportional to the displacement. So if you stretch the spring a meter, and then you stretch it to 2 meters, so that the stretch distance is 2 meters. By doubling the displacement, you'll also double the spring force. Okay? That's what direct proportionality means. So the oppos opposing force generated in the spring is directly proportional to the displacement. So here's Hooke's law again. And there are three things in three variables in this equation, f spring, k and x. F spring is the force that's generated in the spring. It can be positive or negative based on whether it's to the left or to the right or up or down. And force is measured in newtons. All force is measured in newtons. K is a spring constant, which we can think of as the stiffness of the spring. And it can only be positive. We can't have negative stiffness and we measure k in newtons per meter. x is the spring's displacement from its relaxed position. So x is how far have we stretched or compressed the spring. And it can be positive or negative based on whether we're stretching to the left or to the right or up or down. x is a distance, so we measure it in meters. Now you might be wondering, why is there a negative sign right here in this equation? Well, we are going to answer this question by looking at two examples. Here's a horizontal spring. If I pull this spring to the right from its relaxed length, then the spring force will pull back to the left. So because the displacement is rightward, it's positive. And because the spring force is negative, it is leftward, it's negative. Now, here's a second example. If I take the spring and I compress it to the left from its relaxed length, then the spring force will push back to the right. So if we give it a leftward or negative displacement, then a positive rightward force will be produced. Now look back up at this equation here. If I divide both sides by x, then on the right, these x's cancel. And that leaves me with this. Now let's clean up this equation a little bit, make it look nicer. Remember that k, the spring constant, is always positive. Right? You can't have negative stiffness. This is always positive. In this first example on top, we have a, pos a negative force, so negative force, and a positive x. So on the whole, the left side of the equation will be negative. And the right side of the equation, thanks to this negative sign, will also be negative. Without this negative sign here, without that negative sign, the left side would be negative 
and the right side would be positive, and then the left wouldn't equal the right. So the negative is here to make sure that the two sides are equal. So in the second example here, down here, the force was positive, force was positive, and the displacement was negative, and again, in this second example, the left side of the equation is negative on the whole. And again, thanks to that negative sign, the right side is also on the whole negative. So what we see is that this negative sign is there because f spring and x always have opposite signs. In other words, the negative sign is in the equation because one of these two things will always be negative and the other will be positive. Another way to say this is there's a negative sign because the force arrow and the displacement arrow, right, blue and green, always point in opposite directions. Okay, so one last thing in this video. If you stretch a horizontal spring and hold it there at rest, okay, so here's our spring, and there's the resting position, and I'm going to pull it to the right, I'm going to stretch it. If you hold it there at rest, well, the spring force will pull back to the left. Now, if this spring is at rest, then it's in equilibrium and the net force is zero, which means that our forces balance and the spring force thus must equal or balance the stretching force in order for the net to be zero and for this thing to be at rest. And likewise, if we take a horizontal spring, right, here's our spring, and if we push it into the left, compress it from its relaxed length. It'll move over this way. And then once we hold it at rest, the opposing spring force will balance the compressing force because it's at a net force of zero. So if it's at rest, the net force is zero, and the spring force balances or equals the compressing force. And by the same token, we could do this with vertical springs. Here's the relaxed position. So we've pulled the spring down. There's some stretching force pulling it down. That generates an opposing spring force. And if the spring is being held here at rest, then it's in equilibrium, and the two forces balance. They equal. And similarly, we can state here's the relaxed length, the dotted line is the relaxed length of some spring, and we've pushed it down toward the floor. Right? We've compressed it with the downward force. That generates an opposing spring force. And if we're holding our thumb against it so that the spring is at rest, then now we have balancing of the vertical forces because the spring is in equilibrium. It's at rest. So the balancing of the forces says that the spring force equals or balances the compressing force. They balance to give a net of zero.